everybody, Alan Barnowski here with a lesson for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Today we are looking at Bill Napier's rendition of the song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? You can find a full write-up and tab at Acoustic Guitar Magazine, so definitely go check that out if you don't have it already. What I'm going to do today is play through the arrangement so you can hear it, you can see what my hands are doing, and then afterwards I've got some thoughts that I think are going to help as you go about learning this. Um, so to start, I'll just go ahead and play through it. Here we go. So there's a few things going on here. Um, one thing I'm sure you heard is cross picking. There's a lot of it going on in this arrangement. So we'll talk about cross picking. And the other thing I'm sure you noticed are some quick hammer ons that happen. So um, we'll touch on both of these. And then after that, I've got just got a few kind of overall thoughts that I think will help it too. Um, so starting off with cross picking, what this means is that you're playing usually three strings, one right after the other, so in succession. Um, so in the case of D, G, and B, if we were to cross pick those, it would sound like this. And what's going on is you play D, and then G, and then B, and then you just loop that. So D, G, B, D, G, B. Um, in the picking hand, I like to use alternating picking, so that means consistent downs and ups. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, I don't know if that's what Bill Napier did, um, but most folks today do use alternating picking. That's what a lot of folks teach. Um, so that's what I recommend as well. If this is all confusing to you, you can just find the pick directions in the tab and just follow those. Um, but yeah, getting back to cross picking, you can do the same thing in the right hand while holding a D chord. And if you do that, it would sound like this. And that is exactly what you see in measure one of this song. Um, so that's what you see in measure one, and then you see cross picking happen kind of throughout. It comes up again in measure five, just over the open strings. Um, that makes it a G chord. You see it again in measure seven, in measure nine, and then last of all, in measure 15, but it's a little bit different in 15. In that case, um, we're gonna be doing it from the high E string while holding a D chord, from the high E string down to the G string. So it would sound like this. All right, so um, that one's a little bit different because we're going in the kind of backwards instead of forwards, but still a cross picking, um, cross picking lick there. Um, yeah, I think that covers it for cross picking. The, the other thing that you probably see going on here are hammer-ons. There's a lot of hammer-ons happening. Most of it is from the second fret to the fourth fret along the, the fourth string. So that kind of move right there. I use my pinky when I do this hammer-on. A lot of people probably use their ring finger. Either one. Um, the key, though, is you want a crisp, snappy, fast hammer-on. So that's the, that's the kind of sound you're going for. Um, you also see some hammer-ons going on from the open string to the second fret. And in that case, I use my middle finger. Um, and this is on the fourth string now. And then you also see it happen again on the fifth string. So those come up in uh, measures five and six. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on with hammer-ons. So the combination of those two things make this tune uh, unique. It gives it its character. But there's something else going on that I just kind of want to mention, um, and that's that the cross picking normally happens, actually entirely happens, on the um, upper strings, so on the fourth, third, second, and first strings. Um, cross picking happens in that area, while the single note melody lines happen on the lower strings, so on the fifth string and on the fourth string. And there's only a handful of notes that are being used. On the fifth string, it's just A and B. And you see that just in the 
very first pickup measure. And then it goes into cross picking. Um, but yeah, so those are just those two notes being used on the fifth string. And then on the fourth string, there's just uh, three more notes that are used. The open, D, second fret E, and then fourth fret F sharp. So all together, we've got A and B, and then D, E, and F sharp. And those are all the notes, other than the cross picking that we're gonna be using. Oh, and I guess there is an A that comes up here too on the third string. You see that kind of show up in measure 10 and 11. So regardless, there's not that many notes that are being played in this song. It's the combination of the lower string melody, the upper string cross picking, and the kind of hammer on effects that give this song its character. Um, so I just thought that'd be worthwhile to talk about. Um, and yeah, have fun as you're learning how to play this. I hope it works well for you. If you have any questions, drop it below. Would love to hear from you. You can also shoot me an email. Would love to hear from you that way too. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this time. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.